personal notice, danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Needle in the Haystack, another adventure of George Valentine. My dear Mr. Valentine... I quite appreciate the imposition of sending you this urgent demand on a holiday. But I must see you. I must have your help immediately. My entire life's work is in jeopardy. My labor, my love, the fruit of my brain has been stolen from me. Twelve priceless objects, Mr. Valentine. The culmination of my life's endeavor. My entire fortune stolen. Please, please meet me at your office regardless of the hour. Most desperately... Ferdinand Vaz. All right, all right, let's have it. Something pretty valuable was stolen from you, is that right? Oh, my most priceless possessions, Mr. Valentine. Without them, I am nothing. Without them, I... Yeah, well, uh, what were they? My roses. Huh? One dozen red roses. You... Lost your roses, Mr. Vaz? Yeah, precisely. I, uh, I suppose it gives you kind of an empty feeling. Oh, rather, yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Brooksy, it's been a rougher weekend than I thought. Wait a minute, George. Mr. Vaz, where, uh, where did you lose these dozen red roses? In Pasadena. Pa- Pasadena, huh? Look, Buster, get out of here fast before I... Mr. Valentine, what is the matter with you? Have you gone crazy? Oh, no, I'm as sane as you are, Napoleon. But let go of me. Now, now, please listen, Mr. Valentine. The the flowers are worth thousands. My life's work, they are. Sure, sure. Worth thousands of Rose Bowl tickets, I know. Find a dozen roses among millions. Oh, now, listen to me. I have devoted my life to those roses. They're the only ones of their kind in the world. They're not just red. No, they're flame. They're crimson. They're fire. The Ferdinando Rose. Ferdinando? It was the mater's idea, the name. Uh, Rather appropriate, don't you think? Uh, We live in Mexico City. Oh, sure, I could tell from your accent. Uh, Quite, quite so, quite so. Uh, Oh, yes, yes, I see what you mean. Uh, (laughs) But we've been there for years now. And climate, you know. Mr. Valentine, you don't seem to appreciate the Rose Festival in Pasadena attracts the world's foremost authorities on flowers. My unveiling of the Ferdinando today would have emblazoned my name in history. Like Martha Washington. Uh, I I beg your pardon. Skip it, never mind. Somebody clipped your buds, stole them, huh? Okay, how did it happen? Well, I I came up on the train, and and then at the last possible moment, the mater posted the roses to me by air express. Uh And so they'd be fresh, you know. But I I have never received them. Did you call the airline? Oh, Oh, yes, yes, the boxes transported all right yesterday, but... Somewhere in the express delivery service it became lost or stolen. The service insists that they've never even heard of it. Oh, well, look, that sounds more like a mix-up in mail than it does... Mr. Valentine, I have the name of the man at the delivery branch office. I'm not concerned with whether he's a criminal or an idiot. All I want is my roses. I've tried to see him alone and I've got nowhere. There's only a few hours left, ma'am. My roses will be wilted unless you help me now. All right, all right, take it easy. We'll go see this guy with you. Oh, brother, what a way to start the new year. Oh, waking people up. And my aerial's busted. I can't see the game today. You got any idea how many packages we've handled the past two weeks? Flowers to Pasadena. Coles to Newcastle. My good fellow, the package was distinctly marked F. Vaz. Pasadena, California, yet somehow your company has made a mistake. We don't make mistakes. Uh, anyway, I... Oh, say, it's not a bad day once you open your eyes. The flower vase. That's it. That's what happened. Flower vase? Yeah. 
I got a small district. It's the name of one of our little floor shops in my area. It was marked for them, wasn't it? That's where I had the delivery boy take it. You sent this guy's package to a flower store? Right? Oh. Oh, well, well, I mean, yes, but, but that was the way it was addressed, I thought. F vase. It was marked flowers. Naturally, I thought it you... It was distinctly marked vase. Vase, was... I tell you. Oh, vase. cut it out, cut it out, oh. will you, both of you? The flower vase, huh? Come on, Brooksy, we can find it, all right. What? Oh, wait a minute for me, old fellow. Oh, no, you don't, Buster. Apologize to the man and then wait for us at your hotel. If I'm crazy enough to go sniffing for roses, I'd rather go crazy alone. This is it, I guess, George. Yeah. Not much of a shop. Well, it's a neighborhood place. Far cry from all the excitement up on Colorado, isn't it? Looks like it's open, though. At least somebody isn't rushing to get an early seat for the parade. Oh, brother. When I think I could be having scrambled eggs and waiting to tune in the orange bullet... George, look. Yeah. The joint's a mess. Flowers all over the floor. The lock was broken. This shop's been broken into. You mean broken up, Angel? Boxes all torn open, counter tipped over? I certainly don't see any roses, huh? Maybe this didn't happen so long ago, George. I mean, I thought I heard... Yeah, back room. Wait a minute, you slow down. You let go of me. I'll call the police now. What... What do you want? Just take it easy, Shorty. Take it easy. Now, what's the big idea playing scavenger hunt in here? But I didn't do it. Well, I'm the owner, Theodore Herman. Flowers for funerals. That's me. But Mr. Herman, it just doesn't make sense. None of it. My shop has never been broken into before, Mr. Valentine. Never. I hate trouble. Funerals, a few corsages, maybe somebody remembers a wedding anniversary. That's all I ask. Yeah, sure, I know. I know it's tough. But you say there wasn't any money taken out of the cash register. Well, how about those roses? Well, I have nothing to do with the Rose Festival. I'm just a small man. I mean, did you get the package, the one intended for Mr. Vaughn? But I tell you, the only business I had yesterday... Here's the receipt, George. What? It was with the papers where the condor tipped over. Yeah. Yeah, sure, that's it, all right. 4 p.m. yesterday, received delivery, Air Express, package, Mexico City. So your memory's not so good, is it, Mr. Herman? Here, let me see. Oh, but I didn't. There, you see, J.H. It says J.H. Of course, it was my brother. Your brother? Joshua Herman. He signed for the package. I remember now. I had gone to Forest Lawn. Joshua stayed here for an hour or so. But didn't your brother say anything when you got back? He must have put those roses someplace, in water maybe. They must have been here several hours. He didn't say anything unless, well, he might have made a mistake and put them in the big refrigerator back here. He's not a flower man. Cold storage is usually just for orchids. Stand, stand still, everybody. Well, look at the orchids. Yeah, don't <laughs> remark, sister. Rollo, Miss Gun, close. Suppose you stop waving it around the room, Rollo. I can't help it. I'm cold. Waiting all morning for you guys to stop jabbering. Well, get out of my way. Not so fast, Buster. You're the guy who tore up this joint. Of course he did. He did it. He was caught. He was hiding don't in there. Sh- shut up, shorty. I ain't got no roses. There's nothing in there but a quarter ice cream. Now, step to one side. I said stick around, Rollo. Don't get any bright ideas about following me, Valentine. You didn't find the roses, huh? Come on, who do you work for? You're not bright enough to want them. You can't hurt my feelings, Valentine. But I can hurt yours. But you don't die. Here. That's better. Now, you want to know where I'm going? I'll tell you, bright eye. I see. I see. It's a hot bath. Oh, dear. All I ask of life is a good, steady flow of funerals. And now... Oh, skip it, will you? There's too much excitement over a dozen roses, even for Pasadena. It certainly is, George. But he didn't find them. Well, that's what I mean. There's only one person who does know where they are, Mr. Herman. Your brother, Joshua. Now, where is he? I don't know. I loaned him my car last night, and he's been gone ever since. He's from out of town, you see. Gone? Well, why didn't you report it? Oh, there's nothing wrong. Don't misunderstand me. Joshua said he had to get in condition for the... Well, of course. That's why Joshua's here. He's wealthy. He's successful. He's just a little blind, that's all. 
He thinks Ohio State is going to beat California. <laughs> the California bear is losing all its hair. Its teeth are growing yellow. Come on, come uh, on, come on. The roses. Uh, let me tell you that any team from the Midwest can lick any team from anywhere. So, Larry, who's he? Bronk, I never heard of him. Step right up and place your bets, gentlemen. I will oh, give you... Oh, come on, bartender. Bring us two cups of coffee, will you? Hey, I say... That guy didn't want to talk football either. What guy? Well, I, I was there in my brother's store, like I told you. I, I, and then this guy comes in a few minutes later. He didn't even know who Savick was. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Did this somebody want to talk roses? No, he didn't talk at all. Big person, you know? Takes one look at the roses. They were the only ones in the joint. He grabs them fast, throws me a dollar bill, and then he runs. Uh-huh. You're getting warmer, brother. Remember anything else about him? Hey, he left a big Cadillac sitting at the curb with a motor running. Catch the license number? Well, well, sure, sure I did. It was, uh, uh, blank, blank, something, three, eight. Oh, yeah. Mr. Valentine, I just thought he was a big sport grabbing flowers for his wife, you know, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, something else, too. He was, uh, kind of squint-eyed and had a mole on his cheek. Okay, thanks very much, Ohio. Stick around. Uh, what was he? Anyway, a crook or something? Say, you know, I, I'm not really from Ohio State, you know. I, I did just happen to know a girl who was born in Dayton once. And let me tell you that we're football. But Joshua and I will be seeing the parade going to the game. Keep your eye on Ohio, will you, Brooks? He's in the next room there beyond the palms. Sure, George. Well, we don't want to be mixed up in any trouble. It's his holiday. I'm sorry, Mr. Herman, but I'm telephoning the police. And two bits say they want you both to stick around to answer questions. This three-ring circus is getting wackier by the minute. But where is Ohio? I don't see him, do you? Well, maybe Joyce needed to wash his hands, Miss Brooks. I'll go and You're see. You're looking for Ohio State? He's outside. What? He uh, said he needed some fresh air, Miss. Coffee makes him sleepy. Oh, uh, through the back door there, toward the parking lot. The parking lot? Oh, you don't suppose he's on his way again, do you? Uh, mine is a blue sedan. No, no. There he is, over there, asleep in the back seat. Oh, oh yes, yes. Uh, you'd better let me snap him out of it. Joshua? Joshua? Oh, no. Uh, no, wait a minute, miss. Stay where you are. What's the matter? Uh, wait till I cover him with a blanket. He's... Mr. Herman! Go back inside. Get Mr. Valentine off that phone. Now, hurry! George! I shook him. He was... There was blood on my hands. Me asking for a steady flow of funerals. And there he was, dead. My own brother. Stabbed. Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. One of these days, you get in your car to start out to a dinner party, a business trip, or maybe a family gathering. You touch the starter and, uh-oh, dead battery. But there's an easy way to avoid that kind of holdup and have your car start fast every time. The protective service you get at independent Chevron gas stations and at standard stations will do it. They can tell in a jiffy if corrosion is threatening the battery cables. They'll make sure the water level is right and the terminal posts and clamps are okay. Why not get this speedy, protective service tomorrow? Avoid the delay and extra costs of a neglected battery. It's especially important at this time because short trips and cold weather put extra drain on the battery, cut down its ability to do its job. And, of course, your battery loses power most when your car is used least. So for full starting power and to keep your lights and radio working properly... Ask for a battery check. It's another protective service offered you at standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. (laughs) 
And now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. January 2nd, 1950. And where are you? Pasadena, of course. But you didn't come to see the Rose Festival. No, you only came to see 12 red roses belonging to Mr. Ferdinand Vaz. Only you haven't found them yet. And you didn't come to see the Rose Bowl game like Joshua Herman did. Only, of course, he won't be seeing it either, now that he's dead. Well, like George Valentine, you feel that so far, 1950 is too full of thorns. Particularly when you try to explain it all to Lieutenant Riley. A knife with no fingerprints. A blanket with a hole in it. A murder takes place in a parking lot, only nobody... They're all tearing out to see the Rose Parade. Well, so was I until you had to go ringing bells. Wouldn't be let it happen inside Pasadena's city limits. All right, all right. Everybody's looking for a dozen roses. Only we know that a guy in a big car hijacked them last night. And the guy who saw that guy was afraid Mr. Ohio State might remember some more of what he saw, maybe, huh? I don't know. Say, I wonder if it was that cold storage thug you told me about. The one with the gun? What do you mean? That original story about the roses. Yeah, but there were some roses from Mexico City. We know that. Yes, and Joshua Herman told you he opened it. George, he saw the roses. They're what the man came and took. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Thugs and hijackers and knife artists are all interested in a valuable new type flower. You mean you smell something besides the Ferdinand? Well, sure. Smuggling. What else? Smuggling. Oh, it goes like this, Riley. A smuggler in Mexico, or maybe a ring of smugglers, I don't know, decide to take advantage of the season. Must be a lot of flowers being shipped around right now for the Tournament of Roses. Well, it's a good time and way to send something in, isn't it? Inside the roses? Or maybe some of them are phony roses. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Only the other stuff still happened. The misdelivered package, the hijacking... All I'm driving at, Riley, is send out a description of Ferdinand Vaz. Find him and you'll find the answer. What? Well, that's right. I checked the hotel. Vaz never registered there. He's a phony. But at least he could tell us what it's all about. It was his bouquet. Well, come on, come on. Get to work. He can't be anything worse than a smuggler and a murderer. We got a lead on that car, Lieutenant. Cadillac blank blank something three eight. The one you said the guy who took the flowers was driving? Well, good work, Sergeant. Who's it registered to? Now, we're checking it up now. The guy driving was big, dark, squint-eyed with a mole Where's on Where's the car? Well, just parked, that's all, Lieutenant. How could anybody move anywhere with the streets all cleared for the parade? It's right in the heart of Pasadena with the rest of the world. <laughs> Oh, no, no. Grand Avenue, right where the parade is forming. Talk about needles in a haystack. I'm not so sure. Good place to hide, but a good place to get caught, too. Not even a crook can resist a parade. That Cadillac's on this street somewhere. Look, Brooksy, you and Riley go ahead. I'm going to take a look around. If our hijacker is here, it'll be quite a magnet. <laughs> Quit shoving. Plenty of room for everybody to see. Sorry, right, there was a lady standing on my foot. How soon as the parade starts? Yeah, search me, buddy. Oh, boy, look at them girls on the floats. They're yeah, blind with a bathing suit made out of daisies, see ya? Oh, boy, she loves me, she loves me not, she loves me, she... Hey, quit shoving, you. You can see over my shoulder, you can... Hey. Yeah, Rollo, it's me, Valentine, remember? You followed me. How was your hot bath? I had coffee instead. Beat it. Man at work, huh? Don't you know it's a holiday? I still carry a gun. Get lost. Okay, you slide through the crowd, I slide through the crowd. Join me, you'll join the people. I don't mind. Go ahead, pull the trigger. <laughs> Fearless Fosdick. Huh? With a few thousand witnesses, sure. Go on, create a little excitement. Smart boy. Look out, don't, don't slide that way. Cop over there. Huh? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Hey, you... Uh... What do you want, Valentine? Oh, not much. Spotted him yet? Shut up. You'll never find him staring at the girls like that. Come on now, keep your mind on your work. I won't interrupt. Oh, oh there he goes. Uh, who, who, what? There he goes in the squat coat, red necktie, running out on the street. So that's him, huh? The hijacker. Oh, I, I say, Valentine. Well, hello, Mr. Vaz. Welcome to the park. Well, I do with him, boys. I can't shake him. Well, never mind. Get after that red necktie. He's got the flowers. Sure, get the hijacker. Let's see what's in those flowers. I'll attend to Valentine. Run. The man will get away. He's, ha- he's, he's heading for one of the floats. Hey, boys, wait a minute. You can't shoot a guy in this crowd. Will you do as I say? Now, run. After all, Valentine, a chap could use a knife in a crowd quite successful. A knife? Well, not on a decoy, I'm afraid. Big of one. I got fans in the audience, mister. About a dozen cops watching me. 
You see what's happening to your strong boy already? Right, come back there. Get out of the street. Well, stick around. I want the same. Have it yourself. Not to me, Go down. I want to go, Buster. I'm going to grab that hijacker myself. Hey, you. Come back here. I saw you run up there on the float hijacker. Stop, will you? Oh, you don't get a free ride out of here. Get away from me. Mister, look out. What do you want? Get away. Just you, that's all, Buster. I said get away from here. Oh, no, you don't. Hey. Strike three, you're all out. <laughs> that's it, Valentine. We got him. We got them all. Smugglers, that's it, all right. And you know what it is? Diamonds. A fortune in diamonds. <laughs> the Englishman folded up like a lawn chair and told us everything. Who did the murder, Riley? Huh? Oh, don't you worry. We'll sweat it out of one of them, all right. Joshua Herman saw too much of something, that's all. So they sent somebody after him to keep him quiet. Except for the Hermans, they're all tied together. And this guy, the hijacker, he stuck his nose in too, huh? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. Come on, buddy. Come on, wake up, wake up. Uh... Why, we'll be done in time for the parade, Valentine. Uh, well, what, what happened? Yeah, you see, here comes our answer to the dime. Come on, you're all right, Buster. Wake up. Oh, yes. Yes, somebody hit me. Oh, isn't that too bad? Yes, I was... Look, somebody was walking off. Get off this float. Hmm? What are you doing on my float? Get off. Your float? Of course it's mine, you idiot. Most of the floats lined up for ten blocks of mine. I'm a floral designer. Well... Yes, yes, yes. I ran into Herman's last night and bought some roses. I ran into every flower shop and front yard in Pasadena. But don't you understand? We needed them at the last minute. We were short of roses at the last minute. We thought you were a hijacker. You interfered with the big smuggle. Do I care? Am I interested in diamonds? Well, you should be. They're in the roses you bought. (laughs) At first, I thought I would sue you, gentlemen. Now, I don't think I will. Uh Oh, there goes the first band. How about those dozen roses? Look, getting ready for the parade, we just throw all the flowers into bins for the decorators to use as they work. Gentlemen, this year I used 325,550 roses. And you're looking for diamonds in a dozen roses. Excuse me. Oh, no. Go oh, ahead, no. look at the floats, Riley. They're no, beautiful. look. Elephants made out of roses. Girls throwing roses all over the crowd. Horses decorated with roses. Horses even walking on roses. Roses. Oh, roses. Don't let it get you, Riley. You said you could work your murder case out all right. Why worry about the diamonds? But they're there. A fortune in diamonds. Maybe those roses are in the hubcap of a float. Or maybe somebody will just throw them in a garbage can. Well, at least you can't say we don't do things big in California. Final score. Last eight, seven, well, eight, that's California. it. We'd better be moving if we're going to reach the garbage. Oh, George, what a game. I only wish I could have seen it. Your it's your Chevy's hot good. Well, I have to admit, they don't play bad football in the Midwest, Mr. Herman. <laughs> yes, and it was so nice of you to bring us. Uh, not at all. Made quite a day for us. George, you forgot the blanket. Uh, no, I didn't, Angel. I've been thinking about it. What? But you left it back up there. You'd better run back. Oh, and get I didn't it. get it, Miss Brooks. I, I no, don't... no, don't bother. Leave it there. Forget it. George! I, uh... I don't want us to get separated in the crowd. But if you said you were thinking about it, it why didn't... It was the other blanket I was thinking about, Angel. I've been thinking about it all through the second half and feeling guilty for sticking around to see who won. Why, Mr. Valentine, what are you talking about? A steady flow of funerals, Mr. Herman. Yours. What? Don't bother to look innocent. You killed your brother. I can wrap it all up in a blanket. The one the police have. Exhibit B. The one with a hole in it. George, what on earth The one Mr. Herman here covered his brother's body with, Angel. Remember? Remember how you walked outside and saw Joshua lying in the back seat and you thought he was asleep? Yeah. Well, I guess maybe he was asleep. Oh, Mr. Valentine, no. Joshua was lying Yeah, Mr. Herman. It was you went over to open the car door and then told Miss Brooks not to come any closer. You pulled a blanket over your brother so she wouldn't be upset by seeing him. Told her to run to me for help. Well, yes, George, that's right. Well, Brooksy, how did the hole get in that blanket? Unless our friend here stabbed his brother through it. After you'd gone and just before he came running back to the bar. 
How about it, funeral fan? Goodbye, Mr. Valentine. Hey, what's your rush, Excuse back? Excuse me, get up. No, my no, way, Mr. You? Herman, you're not going anywhere. Get out of my way! Not in this Quick, crowd. Just stop yeah. shoving, will you? 103,000 people make a pretty good shake. Yeah, sure, Riley. Oz's story and his phony name, well, they were just cooked up to get me interested so I'd help him trace the diamonds. The flowers were supposed to go to Mr. Herman, to the flower vase? Yeah, that's right, of course. That's how they were addressed. The delivery man told us so. There wasn't any mistake. But if they were supposed to go to Mr. Herman... He's already confessed that much, Miss Brooks. He was part of the smuggling ring himself. Oz and the tough boy couldn't understand why he hadn't got the delivery yet. Or rather, why Herman couldn't produce the diamonds to pass on. They thought he was trying to pull the fast one. Then Herman got the notion of saving himself by killing his big shot brother. At a time when there were so many people mixed up in it, it almost, well, anybody else would be a suspect. His brother had money, didn't he? Uh Uh-huh, lots of it. We all knew that. Herman could have squared himself with the boys and then some. So it ends up and he doesn't even have a rose to his name. Murders are crazy, aren't they? Yeah. Don't exaggerate, Miss Brooks. People are, too. Look, look. Here I still sit at the steering wheel. No, there's an opening, Lieutenant. Hurry up. Huh? Step on it. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. There, you see? We made ten feet. <sighs> yeah. Hey, what time is it? Well, it's 7.30. Where are we now, huh? Pasadena. I don't believe this. Do you? <laughs> We're almost to the city limits, though. George, I wonder if anybody else has saw the game today is home yet. <laughs> you know, it's too bad we don't have a two-way radio set in this car. We could ask him. We could also tell him. Happy New Year, everybody. family car could pick up a pencil and write a list of New Year's resolutions, I bet you'd find this at the top of the list. I'm for Chevron Supreme gasoline, and Chevron Supreme is for me. Smart car. For this premium quality gasoline is climate tailored. Based on year-round weather reports, it's tailored to each season and to the West's different altitude and temperature zones. So to get the best out of your car each month in 1950... And wherever you drive, go on Chevron Supreme. With the first tank full, you'll notice how much better your car responds. Faster starts, smoother pickup in traffic, powerful ping-free performance on hills. In fact, you can't buy a better gasoline for today's high-compression engines. Why not try Chevron Supreme tonight? Or ask for it tomorrow at independent Chevron gas stations and at standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Daly is starred as George. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Virginia Gregg appeared as Brooksy, Wally Mayer as Lieutenant Riley. Ben Wright was heard as Ferdinand, Stanley Farrar as the Expressman, Bob Griffin as Teddy, Clayton Post as the Thug, Bill Conrad as Josh, and Sidney Miller as the Hijacker. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.